Welcome to the uh, Coterie tutorials. We've been running a series of these looking at different tactics you can use along the, the race model, which is from Smart Insights. So we've got reach, at, convert and engage. And today we're going to be looking at a tool that you can use in the reach phase, which is something called social listening. And I'm delighted to be joined by Sal from one of our digital partners, uh, all the way over in sunny Spain. And um, so, Sal, should we kick off? What What is social listening? Uh, social listening, um, a lot of the time people, if, if people have heard of it from a strategic level, it could be for uh, businesses that are monitoring brand mentions and keywords so that they can then look at their share of voice against, against competitors, deal with any um, brand management issues and then tweak their strategy accordingly. When you look at it on an operational level, this is more uh, looking at media and influences uh, that are talking about your business and talking about your professional discipline. And then it would be identifying potential kind of areas that your clients would your potential clients would be interested in. So that could be around their verticals or their professional discipline as well. And then it's putting out that information over your communications. So that could be um, via blogs, it could be via social media, or it could even be by um, uh, speaker opportunities. That's brilliant. So how could you apply that to partner marketing? How could it be useful? So. Partner marketing, um, specifically in the tech industry, uh, it's hugely competitive. Uh, so people aren't necessarily, or potential clients aren't necessarily interested just in the solutions. They're interested in the people who will be integrating and uh, specifying the solutions. So all of the help that you can give your um, partners, sales teams or lead generation, contacts in terms of helping them to show that they know what they're talking about and that they understand the verticals that their potential clients are working in all of that kind of information is definitely going to help them to achieve their sales targets perfect so that's great from in terms of a vendor being able to use it there to support their their, their partners so are, are people using social listening today I've seen a big increase in it um, after the after the pandemic. There's definitely been an uptick in, in people and organisations using it online. Obviously, because lead gen teams and sales teams have been driven online, they can no longer talk to each other at conferences and events. So there has been an increase. The only thing is that you can see that there's a lot of organisations that don't necessarily understand how to do it properly and aren't quite getting the balance between sounding um, overly salesy. Yeah, no, that's no, that's interesting. So so then with that in mind, what would be like, I don't know, five tips or something like that if you would start, if you were thinking about starting to use social listening in a partner marketing context, what, what would be the things that you should you could do? Number one would be setting your objectives. So um, working out, I mean, they could be lead generation objectives, um, but equally they could be about building relationships with industry influencers again to potentially get guest blogging opportunities or speaker opportunities. Number two is really uh, thinking about the customer personas, uh, the potential clients that they they want to get in front of and they want to build profile with. So thinking about what verticals that they're working in, what media they might be consuming, what influences they're following, um, what pains they have um, and what solutions that you have potentially to help them get over these uh, specific pains. So yeah. and, and help them to look good and in their, in their um, you know, within their businesses. Number three, kind of taking all of that information um, on influences, media, and also keywords that relate to um, maybe your professional discipline, 
potential clients, disciplines, um, and then just plugging them into a social monitoring package. So if you have a lot of sources, I find kind of an RSS feed package like um, Feedly is really useful. But then if you have fewer sources, you can easily use something like um, Hootsuite or Sprout for that. So number four, keep monitoring um, ideally on about a weekly basis so you've got fresh um, fresh information um, and then identifying what um, information from those specific areas will be of interest and then putting them into uh, your social putting them across your social networks you know it might be kind of LinkedIn Twitter um, might be blogs um, and also trying to make sure that you get a nice balance of mm -hmm. information. Yeah. And then finally, evaluate. So looking at how well you're doing against those initial objectives um, and monitoring that as uh, I probably recommend evaluating on a quarterly basis so it's not too onerous but yeah kind of tweaking the strategy accordingly um, maybe adding a few more keywords if you feel like you're not getting a sufficient amount of relevant information through. Brilliant I could talk to you all morning about this but um, we'll try and keep these short so thanks ever so much Sal that's that's really insightful and uh, speak to you soon thanks thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.